Miss Vesga, and for today's ELD Kindergarten lesson, we will be learning about families. Our goal today, we will learn about members of our family. There are many different types of families and many different sizes of families. Some families are small, some families are large. So let's talk about some of the people that can be in a family. Some families have a mother. Repeat after me, mother. Very good. Some families have a father. Repeat after me, father. Nice. Some families have a sister. Repeat after me, sister. Some families have a brother. Repeat after me, brother. Very nice. Some families have a grandma. Repeat after me, grandma. Nice. Some families have a grandpa. Repeat after me, grandpa. Nice. Some families have an aunt. Repeat after me, aunt. Nice. Some families have an uncle. Repeat after me, uncle. And some families even have cousins. Repeat after me, cousins. Very nice. I found some pictures of some families. Let's see if we can name some of the family members. This picture, what do you see? Wow, I see a grandma, a father, a mother, a sister, and a brother. Very nice. I see another picture. What do you see? I see a mother, a brother, and another brother. Very nice. I found another picture. What do you see? Wow. I see a grandma, a grandpa, an auntie, and another auntie. Very nice. Here's another picture. What do you see? Wow. I see a grandma, a grandpa, a mother, another mother, an uncle, a sister, another sister, a brother, and another sister. There's a lot of sisters in this family. I found another picture, and this is a picture of an Eskimo family. What members of the family do you see? Let's see if I see them too. I see a mother, a father, and a brother. Very nice. Now that we know a little bit more about families, let's draw our own families. You will need a piece of paper and a pencil, crayon, or marker to draw with.
first thing we're going to need to draw is ourselves. Go ahead and draw yourself on your picture. Now I'm going to draw myself. And I'm going to label that with who is that. This is Miss Vesga, so I'm going to write Miss Vesga. Now it's your turn. Draw the picture of yourself and write your name underneath it. The first word that we were using in our vocabulary was mother. So I'm going to think, do I have a mother? Oh, I do have a mother. Then the first thing I'm going to draw is my mother. I'm going to draw her head, her hair, her big smile, and then I'm going to write mother underneath. Now it's your turn. Do you have a mother? That's great. If you have a mother, go ahead and draw her on your picture. Wow, that's looking really good. The next word on our list is mother, father. Do you have a father? I do, so I'm going to write it on the paper. I have a father with a big smile, and, his, and I'm going to write the word father underneath. Now it's your turn. That drawing is looking really good. The next word after father is sister. I have a sister. She is very tall. My sister is the next person I'm going to draw on my board. I'm going to label that with what? That's right, I'm going to label it sister. Now it's your turn. I've done mother, father, sister. The next word is brother. Oh my goodness, I have two brothers. That means I get to draw two brothers on the paper. Here's one. He has a big smile. And here's another one. He also has a big smile. Did I finish that? I missed something. What did I miss? That's right, I missed the label. Oh my goodness, the label of these two people are my brothers. That's right. Here's a brother. And here's a brother. Do you have brothers? That's awesome. Go ahead and draw your brothers and label them with the word brother. The next word we're going to go with on our list is grandma. Do you have a grandma? I don't have a grandma in my family, so I'm not going to draw her. If you have a grandma in your family, you should draw her and label her with, that's right, the word grandma. Do you have a grandpa in your family? I have one grandpa in my family. So I'm going to take my marker and draw my grandpa. And what am I going to label that person? That's right, grandpa. It's your turn. If you have a grandpa, draw a picture of your grandpa and label it with the word Grandpa. The next family member on our list is aunt. I do not have an aunt in my family, so I will not draw her on the board. 
Do you have an aunt in your family? That's awesome. If you have an aunt in your family, make sure you draw her on the, your paper. After the word aunt is the word uncle. Do you have an uncle in your family? I do. I have two uncles in my family. I'm going to draw them on my paper. Let's see. One uncle, two uncles, and make sure to label both uncles. Now it's your turn. Do you have an uncle in your family? Wow. Make sure you draw them and label them on your paper. The next thing we're going to do is describe the members of our family. Now make sure you use the sentence that we have at the top of my paper. The sentence says, my family members are, hmm, I wonder what goes in that blank. Oh right, it's the people of my family. Listen to how I say it first, and then you're going to put what the members of your family are. My turn is first, so listen to me first. My turn is first, so I'm going to start. My family members are me, my mother, my father, my sister, my grandpa, my two brothers, and my two uncles. What are your family members? Remember, use the sentence starter, my family members are. Wow, thank you for using our sentence starter. If you have more family to talk about, feel free to use the rest of the sentence starter to talk about those members of your family. If you find that this sentence may be a tiny bit easy for you, what you could do is describe the members of your family. For example, my mother, my sister, and my two brothers are very tall. My father has black hair. My uncles are twins. You can use describing words to talk about the different members of your family. Our goal today was to learn about members of our family. Did we do that? Awesome job, high five. We did our, meet our goal today, so that means we did an awesome job learning today. Thank you so much, friends, for joining me in kindergarten's ELD lesson. I hope to see you next time in my classroom. Bye-bye. and this is Wally. Hi friends, I'm Wally. Really nice to see you guys. Today we're going to talk about the feeling frustrated. How you doing Wally? Well, I'm doing all right. Yeah, um, I don't have to wake up early in the morning for school, so I get to stay in my pajamas a little longer. Mm-hmm, I kind of like that. Yeah, and well, 
I have a little more time during the day to play with my toys because I don't get to go to school. Yeah, that's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. And well, hmm, I see a little more of my mom and dad because they're around the house more. So that's kind of nice because I like spending time with my mom and dad. But hmm, I really miss my friends. And every time I ask my mom, hey mom, can I please have a friend over to play? Or can I please go play with a friend? She says, no, not yet. Ah. Oh, how does that make you feel, Wally, when your mom says you can't play with your friends and you really want to? Well, it makes my face feel really hot and my body feel really tight and yucky. I think I'm feeling frustrated. Oh, Wally, that is a big feeling word. Yeah, can you guys say that word? Frustrated? Good job. Frustrated. And frustrated is when we really want to do something and we can't do it. Have you guys ever felt frustrated before? Give Wally a thumbs up if you felt frustrated like him. Yep, me too, Wally. We all get a little frustrated sometimes, especially now because we can't do a lot of the things that we're used to doing and that we want to do. Yeah, I don't like that feeling. It's not a good feeling, frustrated. It isn't, Wally, so what could we do when we're feeling frustrated? Hmm, well, I remember when I went to school, my teacher taught us about our happy place. Oh, our happy place? Wally, what's a happy place? Well, it's a place that makes you feel really happy. Uh-huh, oh, like what? Well, it could be a park near your house where you go and play. Yeah, that could make you feel happy. Or it could be a store that you really like and they have cool toys. That could be your happy place. Or maybe it's someone's house, like your grandma's house or your friend's house or your cousin's house. Hmm. Or it could be a very cool restaurant with really good food that's really fun to go to. That could be your happy place. Hmm. Or somewhere outside. Whoa, that's a lot of ideas, Wally. What is your happy place? Hmm. I have a lot, but one of my happy places is going on a hike where I can look at the rocks and the sticks. I like to pick up sticks and play with them. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of trees and I'm outside. I really like being outside. So I think that's my happy place. That's a really good happy place, Wally. Hmm. I think my happy place would be going to the park with my family and my dog, walking around, being outside. Yeah, that's a good one. Maybe you guys could think of your happy place. Hmm, what's a place that makes you feel happy? Can you guys think of a place that makes you feel happy? Now that we have our happy place, Wally, what do we do? Oh, okay, so you close your eyes, okay, and you think about your happy place. Ooh, okay. Maybe we could think about what it smells like, what it feels like, what it sounds like. Hmm, let's take a minute and think about our happy place. And then you can take a deep breath. Ooh, that's a nice idea. Ooh, Wally, how you feeling? Well, hmm, my face isn't so hot and my body feels a little calmer. I know I sure feel better after thinking about my happy place, but I still miss my friends and I'm still frustrated that I can't see them. <laughs> That's true. We still are frustrated, but even though our body feels a little calmer. So Wally, I know you can't see your friends right now, but what about drawing a picture for your friend? Oh, yeah. I could draw a picture for my friend, or maybe you could write your friend a note. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe you could call them on the phone. Oh yeah, sometimes my mom, she FaceTimes on her phone with her friend so she can see them and talk to them. Maybe I could do that. Yeah, Wally, that's a really good idea. So there's other ways that we could kind of connect or think about our friends, even though we can't be with them right now. Yeah. I really miss my friend Alonzo. 
He's a really good friend. I saw him a lot when we went to school. We play on the playground. I know. I think I'm going to draw a picture of me and Alonzo playing together. And then maybe I can send it to him or maybe I could drop it at his house. That's true, you could. Well, and maybe you could have someone help you write some words on there so Alonzo knows what the picture's of and that you're missing him. Oh, yeah, that's exciting. Wow, I'm really happy about that. I think that maybe I will. As soon as, soon as we're done here, I'm gonna draw a picture for my friend Alonzo. Oh, that makes me feel really good. Oh, I'm so glad, Wally, because we're all sort of feeling frustrated about things, but there's things we can do to make ourselves feel better. Yeah, wow, I am feeling better already. Thank you. You're welcome. So, Wally, I brought a few pictures, a couple of pictures for us to look at. Will you look at these pictures with me? Yeah, sure. Of course they will. This is the first one, Wally. Oh, yeah, that's frustrated. Can you guys make your frustrated faces? Mm. That's right, good frustrated faces. Wally, you were feeling a little frustrated. Yeah, I was feeling frustrated because my mom said I couldn't play with my friends. That's right. And Wally, when you got frustrated, what did you do? Well, I took a deep breath. And I thought of my happy place. And that made me feel a little better. Mm -hmm. And once I felt kind of calm and more relaxed, you help me think of some other ideas. Yeah, so now I'm feeling better because I'm gonna write a note and draw a picture for my friend, Alonzo. That's right, Wally. And I have another feeling face. Oh yeah, what feeling face is this? Oh, that one's happy. Can you guys show me your happy faces? That's right. This is the feeling happy. Mm -hmm. And Wally, you're feeling kind of happy. Well, yeah. It makes me happy to think about playing with my friend and drawing him a picture. It makes me feel better because, because when I was missing him so much, hmm, that wasn't a good feeling. But maybe if I draw a picture of him and send him a note, then that will make me feel better. Yeah, yeah. And I feel frustrated lots of times, so maybe I could use this again tomorrow. That's true, Wally. You can use your happy place and calming breaths anytime you're feeling frustrated. I have a question. What is it? Could I change my happy place next time I feel frustrated? Sure, Wally. You can always find a new happy place. So what other kinds of happy places would you think of? Well, there's a store that I really like because it has really cool toys in it. And sometimes I like to close my eyes and pretend I'm in that cool store and then I get to pick out a new toy. Oh, that makes me feel really happy. That is another awesome, awesome happy place, Wally. That is such a good idea. And for those adults in the room, our kids are having lots of feelings these days with everything going on. So if your kids are having feelings like frustrated, just tell them everybody feels frustrated sometimes and use some solutions like taking deep breaths or closing your eyes and thinking of your happy place. And once you guys are calm, it's much easier to think of some really good solutions. That's right, Wally, right? Yeah, and, and don't forget, don't forget, feel your feelings. Yeah, that's right, Wally, feel your feelings. All right, friends, that's it for today. Good to see you. Bye-bye. See you next time. Right now, germs are making people sick. That's scary. So we're all staying home to be safe. Sometimes, things we hear about the virus make us feel scared. When I feel worried, what can I do to calm down and feel better? There are lots of ways to feel better. First, tell your grown-up how you feel. Ask your grown-up for a hug. Hugs are really good at making kids feel calm and safe. Try a keep calm trick, like belly breathing. Lie on the ground and put a toy on your tummy. Take a big breath in and watch the toy go up. Now slowly breathe out and watch the toy go down. So remember, tell a grown-up how you feel. Ask for a hug and practice your keep calm tricks. To learn more, ask your grown-up to go to rmpbs.org. Now you're in the know.
Steckmeyer and I teach first grade at Strive Prep Ruby Hill in Southwest Denver and I'm so happy to be here with you on Rocky Mountain PBS teaching kindergarten and first grade ELD or English Language Development. Today's lesson will be for the more intermediate or advanced friends but we would love for everyone to join. Okay, before we get started with today's lesson, remember in ELD, or English Language Development, we practice speaking in English, listening in English, writing in English, and reading in English. Okay, let's get started. Huh. Look what I found in my closet. These are my old drumsticks from when I used to play the drums. That's something that I like about myself, that I like music, and I like to play the drums, and I like to dance to music. I wonder, do you have things you like about yourself? I hope so. Today's lesson is about cultural intelligence. Those are both really, really big words. So let's clap out the word cultural. Are you ready? Cultural. Hmm, my mouth opened three times. Cultural. That tells me that that word has three syllables. Cultural. Let's do the next word, intelligence. Clap it with me. Ready? Intelligence. Hmm, intelligence. Intelligence. My mouth opened four times. That tells me that word has four syllables. So those are really big words. And there are smaller words inside of those words. In cultural, I see part of the word culture. And in intelligence, I see part of the word intelligent. So let's talk about some of our goals for today, and I want to do that by first talking about some goals for our hearts. First, I know who I am. That's about our culture. Next, I like who I am. Again, that's about our culture. The last heart goal is I like learning about people that are similar to and different than me. That's about having cultural intelligence. Okay, we also have a language goal, goal or a speaking goal. It says, I can talk about myself and others using present tense verbs, action words, and prepositional phrases. Say what? What does that mean? You are going to be experts on it by the end. Prepositional phrases are phrases like over the river and through the wo woods. Today our prepositional phrase is going to be in my home. Okay, so that's a lot to learn and we're, we are going to do it in three steps. First, we're going to read a book. Then, we're going to do some language practice. And last, you're going to draw yourself with me. Okay, by the end of this lesson, I hope you know what it means to have cultural intelligence. I hope that you know who you are, you like who you are, and you know and you like who other people are that are similar to and different than you. Let's get started with our book. Today's book is called Cultural Intelligence, How People Live, How You Live. It was written by Naomi O'Brien and Lanisha Tapp. They are two amazing teachers who wrote this book for kids just like you. I'm going to use my drumstick to point to the words as I read today. What is culture? In this book, 
we will learn all about culture and cultural intelligence. Think about these questions as we read. What is culture? Why is it important? What makes cultures different? Cultural intelligence. Cultural intelligence is a person's ability to relate and work with people across different cultures. Some people let cultural differences keep them separated from people who are not exactly like them. Your culture is who you are. Your cultural identity is made up of so many different things like your age, race, ethnicity, religion, abilities, language, and gender. It also includes the way you dress, your family's traditions, favorite foods, and so much more. A person with cultural intelligence understands that people can exist in many cultural groups at the same time. A person with cultural intelligence would be able to adapt or change to work with people from different cultures. They would use what they know about different cultures to understand people instead of having problems with them. Ooh, culture is food. What is your favorite thing to eat? Who makes it for you? How often do you eat it? Lots of people cook food using recipes that have been passed down through their families. The sharing of these dishes is a cultural experience. Some families have certain foods for special occasions only. Food can be tied into traditions that a family has. Some families might have a meal for birthdays or certain holidays. A person with cultural intelligence would be respectful of this. The foods people eat are a part of their culture, but so are the foods people don't eat. In some cultures, people don't eat certain types of meat, or they may not eat meat at all. Some of these choices are because of their religion. You eat, everyone eats. Look at all those different types of food. Culture is clothing. What kinds of clothing do you wear? Do you wear different types of clothing to school or to play sports? Clothing has a long history. Long ago, the way people dressed might depend on where they lived and the work that they did. People also used materials that were available to them to make clothing. Clothing is often influenced by art. This is called fashion. Fashion can be a part of your culture. How old are you? What do you like? You don't have to be from a different country to have different clothing from people. Young people and old people have their own culture and the clothing to match. Some kids love video games and are a part of a gamer community, so they dress a certain way. Some kids are into hip hop music and dress a certain way to express that part of their culture. You dress, everyone dresses. I see so many different types of clothing. Culture is ethnicity. Ethnicity includes your nationality, ancestry, language, traditions, or cultural heritage. Ethnicity looks beyond physical features. It can be tricky to define ethnicity because there are many components to consider. If you remember that race is mostly physical and ethnicity is cultural, that will help. Some examples of ethnicity are Chinese, Persian, American, Cuban, Italian, or Caribbean. 
Your race can be black and your ethnicity could be Cuban. Your race can be white and your ethnicity could also be Cuban. Race and ethnicity are different. You have an ethnicity. You have an ethnicity. Everyone has an ethnicity. Culture is race. Your race is based on physical features that people might share. People are often grouped together based on the color of their skin, the texture of their hair, or facial features. Your experiences in your racial group are a part of your cultural identity. It is important for a person with cultural intelligence to seek to understand the experiences of people from different races. People from different races experience life in different ways because of their race. There are many stereotypes and racist things said and done to people from different racial groups. A person with cultural intelligence could learn what was hurtful or offensive to certain groups and work to treat people the right way. They can avoid saying or doing something that harms people dif different from them. People can be different races. Culture is religion. Religion can be described as a belief system of faith and worship. There are many religions that people practice all over the world. People may go to a building like a church or a mosque, for example. Some people do not practice any religion at all. Religion can impact our behavior as well as how we interact with the people around us. It can shape the way we see others and the way we choose our friends. It shapes our morals and our traditions too. People can have different religions. Culture is language. Language is a huge part of our cultural, of our culture. Language is how we communicate. Even within one language, there can be different kinds of dialects. That means that the language is similar, but can have different nuances based on a region or culture. Some languages are communicated with hand gestures, like sign language, or even sequences of raised dots on paper, like braille. A person with cultural intelligence would understand that different people communicate in different languages, styles, and ways. They would not make fun of someone for the way they speak or communicate. Language helps us communicate. I see these friends are speaking sign language. Culture is humor. Every person has their own perception about what they think is funny. Some things are funny depending on the cultural groups we belong to. People from different cultures can find certain things funny or amusing depending on where they are from or what their experiences have been. A person with cultural intelligence understands that different cultures find different things funny. They also understand that certain cultures do not think certain things are funny. This can help maintain relationships. You laugh, everyone laughs. Let's think about it. We're going to talk about these together. What is cultural intelligence? How can working towards increasing your cultural intelligence help you and those around you? 
Thank you for reading this book with me, friends. I can't wait to practice our language about cultural intelligence. What an awesome book. After reading that book, what do you think cultural intelligence is? I think it has to do with our heart goals. I think cultural intelligence is knowing and liking who I am and knowing and liking who others are, whether they're similar to or different than me. So remember, one important part of cultural intelligence is being able to talk about it. So our language goal for today is I can talk about myself and others using present tense verbs. That means I'm talking about right now and prepositional phrases. That means I'm talking about where things are. So today our prepositional phrase is in my home. Now that phrase will change based on who we're talking about. If I'm talking about myself, I, I say in my home. If I'm talking about we, me and another person or a group of people, I would say in our home, in our home. If I'm talking about them or they, another group of people, I would say in their home, in their home. Same for if I'm talking about one person. We use he when we talk about one boy or one man or one male. So we could say in his home, in his home. If we're talking about a she, we could say in her home, in her home. Sometimes we might not know whether to use he or she for a person, and that's okay, you can just ask. I also like to use there because it works for all people. You could always say in their home. Okay, let's try with some examples and let's start by talking about our food traditions. Think with me, what do you eat in your home? I eat hamburgers in my home. So I'm going to say that sentence first and then I'm going to say it a second time. And I want you to say it with me the second time. First listen, I eat hamburgers in my home. Your turn with me, ready, go. I eat hamburgers in my home. Now, you might not eat hamburgers or you might not like hamburgers. That's okay. Let's think of some things you might eat or other people might eat or your family eats. So we could say we. Hmm, I'm thinking of pupusas from El Salvador. So we could say we eat pupusas in our home. Your turn with me. Ready, go. We eat pupusas in our home. Nice job. Let's try one with he or she. Let's try she eats pad thai in her home. Notice when I use he or she, I add an S to the end of the verb. That's really important to remember. My turn again. She eats pad thai in her home. Your turn with me. Ready? Go. She eats pad thai in her home. Nice job with those phrases, friends. Actually, they're whole sentences. We just talked about food traditions. Now let's talk about language traditions. You might speak more than one language in your home. That's awesome. You might speak one language in your home and one language at school, or you might speak several different languages with your friends and family. So think about the language or languages you speak in your home. I'll go first. 
I speak English in my home. Your turn with me. Ready? Go. I speak English in my home. Nice work. Let's try a more complex sentence since I can already tell you guys have got this down. Let's try, we speak English and Spanish in our home. Ready? Go. We speak English and Spanish in our home. Nice job. Let's try one with the pronoun they when we're talking about a group of people. They speak Vietnamese in their home. Your turn with me. Ready, go. They speak Vietnamese in their home. Nice work. Let's try one more with he or she. He speaks Spanish in his home. Your turn. Ready, go. He speaks Spanish in his home. Awesome job, friends. Give yourself a kiss on the brain. Amazing work. Let's talk about one more cultural tradition, clothing or what we wear. What do you wear in your home? Maybe you're wearing pajamas while you watch TV. Or maybe you're wearing overalls like Miss Steckmeyer. I'll go first. I wear overalls in my home. Your turn with me. Ready? Go. I wear overalls in my home. Nice work. Other things people could wear are dresses, robes, turbans, or other head coverings. Think about it. Let's try one together. We wear robes in our home. Ready, go. We wear robes in our home. Nice job. Let's try one with they. They wear dresses in their home. When I say more than one dress, I add ES, I say dresses. Let's try it together. Ready, go. They wear dresses in their home. Nice work. Let's try one with the pronoun he. He wears a turban in his home. Say it with me. Ready, go. He wears a turban in his home. Nice job. Let's try one with she. She wears a head covering in her home. Say it with me. Ready, go. She wears a head covering in her home. Awesome job, friends. Two more brain kisses. Amazing work. Hopefully, you got some great practice talking about cultural traditions. So, let's see. We read our book, we did our language practice, and now it's time to draw ourselves and thinking about some of our cultural traditions. Let's go for it. Ooh, for this activity, you will need a piece of paper and some colors, like some crayons or colored pencils or markers. All right, let's get started. Okay, let's get started drawing ourselves, thinking about some of our cultural traditions. Okay, I'm gonna start by thinking about my skin color, let's see. It's kind of hard to find a crayon with a good skin color. My skin is kind of whitish, pinkish. Your skin might be more tan or might be brown, might be black. Okay, this one is, this one's fine. You guys know this, I have a baby in my belly. That's kind of funny, huh? There I am. Let's see, my hair is brown. It's kind of short. Kind of crazy. I have an 
orange headband today. Drop my orange headband. Got my ponytail. Beep, 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 beep. Green eyes. There we go. Thinking about my mouth. Got pink lips. <laughs> Here we go. I need ears. I have small ears. And I'll draw my overalls. So as I'm doing this, you can be thinking about how you would draw yourself thinking about what you look like what makes you special thinking about how you like to wear your clothes how you like to wear your hair what that says about you Maybe you can add to your picture. Think about what food you like to eat. Maybe what language you speak in your home. Let's see. Can I color it in a little bit? There we go. Maybe you have something in your hands. I'm gonna just hold my belly. That's what I've been doing lately. Just hold my belly. Maybe you have a sport you like to play or an instrument you like to play. Let's see, I've got my shoes on. And another important part of your culture might be your name. I'm going to write my name at the top. Awesome. You can also write words or draw pictures about some other parts of your cultural identity or your cultural traditions. So I'm going to draw some pizza. <laughs> I love pizza, some pepperoni, and I think about what language I speak, I speak English, I want to learn more Spanish, I speak English, family is from Norway, so I can draw the country of Norway. Kind of looks like a little island like that. Right, Norway. It's my ethnicity. So think about the things that make you, you. Things you like, things you're good at, Things that you're proud of. Things that you like about yourself. What I have to, oh, I can't forget. Gotta draw my drumsticks. Gotta draw my drumsticks. This is what makes me me. And it's important to know that about myself. It's also important to know that about other people. Friends, thank you so much for talking about our cultural identities together. I would love to see your self-portraits and what you drew about what makes you special. Thanks friends, see you next time.
Wait, what? Oh! Juan, what's wrong? Es que estoy tan frustrado. Wow, Juan, it sounds like you're really frustrated. What happened? Well, I was working on my computer and, and I had spent almost an hour writing a whole sentence and, and all of a sudden, the computer erased the whole thing, and, and I feel so frustrated. Wow, Juan, I can tell you feel frustrated. Your face looks frustrated. Your body feels super tense. You seem super frustrated. Well, yeah, I am muy frustrado. Yeah, Juan. I don't know about you, but I would be frustrated too if I wrote a lot on my computer and then my computer erased it. Yeah. Kids, have you ever felt frustrated? Give a thumbs up if you, like one, have felt frustrated before. Juan, I, I feel frustrated when I can't find the right puzzle piece. Mm. Wow, Juan, it seems like a lot of kids have also felt frustrated. Yeah! So, Juan, when you feel frustrated, what do you do about it? How do you make yourself feel better? Well, that's the really frustrating part of all of this. You see, when I feel frustrated, I like to go outside and play on the playground with my friends. Oh yeah, Juan, that's a great idea. Getting some exercise when you feel frustrated or tense really helps to calm your body and mind. Yeah, I know, but with this stupid virus, I can't go out to the playground and I can't play with my friends and that just makes me even more frustrated. Well, I wonder if there's anything else that we can do to help you feel better, even though you can't play on the playground right now. Hmm. Kids, do you have an idea of what could help Juan feel better? <gasps> That's a great idea. Juan, did you hear that? <gasps> Somebody said, take deep breaths. Yeah, I guess I could take some deep breaths. It's just that I'm feeling so frustrated. I totally get it. When I feel frustrated, taking deep breaths can help me. Let's take some together. Kids, can you take some with us? We're gonna do three slow, deep breaths. Ready, one? Yeah.
how do you feel now, Juan? Well, I guess I feel a little bit better, but to be honest, I'm still feeling pretty frustrated. Yeah, I can tell, Juan. You know, sometimes you need to do more than take deep breaths. I wonder if anybody else has an idea of what you could do to relax your body and relax your mind since you're feeling so frustrated. Kids, do you have another idea of what one could do to feel better? At school, when I feel frustrated, I can go to my happy place. This is my happy place. And it's special because it's a rainbow. <gasps> That's a great idea. Juan, we should practice going to your happy place. Yeah, I, I've never tried going to my happy place before. I guess I'd be willing to give it a try. Okay, then come on. The first thing we have to do is find a comfy, cozy place to relax in. Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. Well, we could go to my favorite spot over there. Come on, kids, let's go. Juan, I'm going to teach you how to use your happy place. Step one, get comfy in any position. Step two, close your eyes. Step three, Think about a place where you like to go. Relax. As you snuggle into your comfy, cozy place, just ahead of you, you see a place that you love to go. It's one of your favorite places to be, and it makes you happy just to think about it. Maybe it's a playground that you love, or the mountains, maybe it's the beach. Picture this place now in your mind where you are relaxed, happy, and calm. What do you see? Are there waves and sand? Is there a snowy mountaintop standing in front of you? Or is there something else you can see? Just seeing that now, you feel safe and happy. What do you hear? Are the waves crashing against the shore? Is the wind rustling the leaves on the trees? What can you smell? the fresh scent of evergreens or the salty air by the shore? And what can you feel? Can you wiggle your toes in the sand? Can you feel the breeze in your hair? Take it all in as you rest in your calm and happy place, knowing that anytime you want, you can go back. Now take a deep breath and come back to where you were in your comfy, cozy place. You feel happy and safe and will take this place with you wherever you go. How do you feel now, Juan? Wow, Tavo, I feel so much better, so much more relaxed. Thanks. Juan, I have an idea while we're relaxing. Yeah? What was it? We can make a playground inside. <gasps> a playground inside? That's fabuloso! Let's do it! Let's go do it! Yay! 
Grown-ups, remember, going to a happy place is not just for kids. It works for grown-ups too. If you find yourself getting frustrated or stressed out, take a few deep breaths and visit your happy place. You can go there anytime. Tavo, you know what? We almost forgot to say, feel your feelings. My siblings are driving me nuts, especially since I'm spending so much time with them and I'm used to not spending any time with them. I kind of fight with my mom a lot, so yeah. We all need our personal space and free time and this can be really difficult to get when we're all stuck at home and can lead to a lot of frustration. So now is the time for us to get really creative to find our alone time. My little brother has been bugging me so much. Like, just leave me alone for two minutes. That's all you gotta do. Another suggestion is to schedule time in and time outs from each other. So finding a signal or some type of word that when it's communicated to others, that they know whether there's times that maybe you need space when you use the word and other times that you might need more of that connection. To learn more, talk with a parent or ask them to go to rmpbs.org. Welcome back learners. My name is Miss Adrian, and I'm happy to see you again today. Today we have a very special lesson to do together. Today we're going to talk about community and we're also going to learn about traditions, special things that you do with your family and loved ones. Okay, I also want to let you know because this is our first lesson together that I have a riddle for you. If you participate in all 10 of the lessons with me over the next few weeks, you'll be able to answer the riddle. Okay, here's the question. What has 10 letters and starts with gas? And there are 10 spaces here. At the end of today, if you stick with me the whole time, you'll get one letter. Okay, at the end of 10 lessons, I will reveal the answer to the riddle. Okay, so let's get going. Today to talk about communities, we will need two types of words. The first type of word are nouns. You've probably heard of nouns before. Nouns are people, places, and things. Also animals, okay? Today we're mostly going to be talking about places and people. We will also need verbs. Verbs are my favorite. They are action words, okay? Let's brainstorm some action words to get our brains thinking and so we can talk about our communities. One action word that I really like is reading. So let's add that to our list of verbs. Read. Here's some other action words. Hmm, how about another favorite? Eating. <laughs> Let's add that to our list of verbs. Eat. All right. What's another action that you do a lot? Hmm, in order to eat, we have to cook. Okay. Let's add that to our list of verbs. Cook is an action. All right. Can you think of any other actions? Mm-hmm. Good. There are lots of good verbs that we use every day. I'm going to add a few more that we will need today during our project. See, watch, mm, what's another good one? Walk, 
all kinds of verbs. All right. The other type of word we will need today to talk about our communities are places. What type of word is place? Remind me again. Oh yeah, it's a noun because nouns are person, place, or things. Places, okay. So what are some of the places that you know and go to every day or go to a lot? I know I go to my house. I go to the park. Hmm. When it's safe and we're not in a pandemic, we can go to school. Mm, by my house, there's a zoo. There's a museum. Where are some places that you go? Great, there are lots of good places. These are just to get us thinking. Okay, let's start to talk about communities. Are you ready? I wrote a book for you just to talk about that. All right, here's my book. It's called Communities by Miss Adrian. A community is made up of people and places. People in the community do things together. They may have special places where they do things together. On this page, I want you to listen for all the verbs you can hear, all the action words. When you hear a verb, put your thumb up. People in communities sometimes have traditions together. Traditions can be cooking food, making music, playing games, praying, dancing, or other special things people do together all the time. One tradition in my family is every Easter, all the kids in the community go to look for Easter eggs. And then we have a big meal outside in the yards and everybody talks and eats together. What is one tradition in your family? So you could say, one tradition in my family is, okay, let me hear you say it. What is one tradition in your family? Very nice. We'll talk more about traditions in a minute. Now that we've learned what a community is and what traditions are, let's make a map of our communities. Are you ready? Get your map out. I'm going to take you on a quick tour of my community and then we will make our maps together. Let's go. All right, learners, first stop on the tour of my community is the Denver Zoo. As you can see, at the zoo we have lots of people, there are lots of animals. I'm not going to go inside because later this month we will probably get to take a visit together. Next in my community we have a museum. This is the Museum of Nature and Science. Look at all these cool exhibits they have inside. They have dogs, Legos. Look, I even found a dinosaur in my community. Cool. Welcome to my favorite place in my community. This is City Park. City Park is a great place to run, to play sports, to have lunch. In my community, we also have a library, which is a great place to read and check out books. I forgot one more place in my community tour is my mom's house. Here I am on the porch. She doesn't want to be in the video, but she's in there. Okay, now that I've taken you on a tour of my community, let's make a map of my community. You can make a map of your community too. There are materials in the lesson plan. Okay, let's start with the most important part of my community, which is my home. I'm going to label it my home. Okay, and I'm gonna draw a heart because I love my home. All right, as I draw the rest of my map, I'm going to use a few words to describe where the other things are in relationship to my home. I'm going to use these phrases, closer, 
farther and next to. Okay. I'm going to draw my mom's house next because that's also an important place to me. My mom's house is close to my house. It's about 10 minutes away. Okay, I'm going to write my mom's, don't forget that apostrophe because it's hers, my mom's house is close to my house. Okay, what else did we see on my tour? Oh, that's right. The zoo is farther from my house. The zoo is farther from my house than my mom's. So the zoo, I think I'll draw it right here. Let's see, how about a zebra to represent the zoo? <laughs> That's a purple zebra. Bet you never saw one of those before. Okay. I'm drawing symbols to represent the places. So this is the zoo. The zoo is farther from my house. My mom's is closer to my house. What else did we see on my tour? Oh yeah, we saw the park. City Park. Okay, City Park is next to the zoo. So remember our other words? Next to the zoo. That means it's right here. So I'm going to draw the park. Remember it has a lake in the middle and lots of trees. Okay, I'm going to draw the park. The park is next to the zoo. The zoo is farther from my home. My mom's house is closer to my home. Okay, there was one more place. What was it? Oh yeah, the museum. Thank you for helping me. Okay, the museum, guess what? Is right next to the park. It's next to the park and next to the zoo. I'm going to draw the museum as a big building with a big door and lots of windows. Okay, this is the museum. All right, so my mom's house is closer to my house. The museum, the park, and the zoo are farther. The museum, the park, and the zoo are next to each other. Look at that. Okay. Oh, the library. How could I forget the library? The library is next to my mom's house. You know what? For the library, I'm going to draw a book to show the library. Okay. Here's my book. The library. All right. The library is next to my mom's house. It's all pretty close. Okay, are you ready? Now we're going to write about my community. Okay, I made my community map and now I'm going to write about it so I can tell other people about my community and what I like to do there. Let's start with my house. My house is... What can I say about my house? My house is close to downtown. Downtown is the middle of the city. My house is close to downtown. I like to think back to those action words, those verbs. I like to sleep at my house. I like to sleep at my house. There's our verb. All right, let's think about the library. The library is far from my house far from my house. I like to cook at the library? No, Miss Adrian, that's silly. I like to read at the library. 
You don't cook at the library, Miss Adrian. I like to read at the library with my friends, not by myself. Let's do one more. How about the zoo? That's a fun one. The zoo is close to the library. Close to the library. Hmm. I like to... What would you like to do at the zoo? I like to watch the... I'm going to add another word in here. An adjective. I like to watch the silly animals at the zoo. Sometimes those animals can be really silly, especially those monkeys. Okay, so now I can tell everyone about my community. Okay, now I can use my map and my story to tell about my community. My house is close to downtown. I like to sleep at my house. The library is far from my house. I like to read at the library with my friends. The zoo is close to the library. I like to watch the silly animals at the zoo. Now it's your turn. Get a grown-up to take you around your community so that you can make your own community map and write a little story to tell other people about it. Great job today, learners. Just to, re to review, today we used nouns, person, place, and thing to talk about the places and the people in our community. We also used verbs, which are action words, to talk about what we do in our communities. We made a community map and told a community story. And now, guess what? You have earned the first letter of your riddle. You remember what the riddle said? What has 10 letters and starts with gas? All right, the first letter is dun 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 dun. The letter A. All right, tune back on Thursday to find out the next letter. Adios, learners. Thanks for spending time with me today. Hi learners and welcome to Math Minute. Are you ready for some math? Today we have a story problem and it is a true story. Listen up. Do you remember my cat Esmeralda? Her nickname is Esme and this story is about her. Let's read it together. Esme got eight toy mice for her birthday in August and then she got ten more toy mice from her friend Mika. Esme played and played with her toys. She played so hard that six of them broke. This is true. Let me show you one of her broken toys. She ate the face right off this mouse. She played so hard that six of them broke. How many mice does Esme have left? When I see a story problem like this, I have to think what is important and what do I need to find? Numbers are always important. I'm going to highlight all the numbers in this problem. I see 8, I see 10, I see 6. Those are all the numbers I see. Then I think, what is the question? What do I have to find? 
The question mark comes after this sentence. How many mice does Esme have left? Okay, at the end of the whole story, how many toys are still good to play with? How many are left? I'm going to underline the question, and now I have to figure out, is it adding or subtracting that I have to do? I see that Esme got eight toys for her birthday, and she got ten more toy mice from her friend. That means adding, okay. So she got eight plus ten. All right, so total toys that she has. I'm going to use my number line if I need to. She's got eight and she got ten more. Here we go. Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. She has 18 total toys. Okay, she played and played and played so hard that six of them broke. She can't play with them anymore. Broke makes me think of subtraction because they're gone. Okay, so we have 18 toys minus six. So I'm going to start at my 18, take away 6. Let's count backwards. Ready? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 12 mice left. Okay, so there were two steps in that problem. We had 8 plus 10 as her total toys, and then we had to subtract 6 because she broke them. How many toys does Esme have left? 12. 12 that she can still play with. That should be plenty of toys for one cat. Thanks for spending a math minute with me. I'll see you next time, learners. As a leader or a teammate, we gotta make sure we listen to others. In a group of three people, whose ideas should you listen to? All three. Because all of their ideas will be great. Exactly. But sometimes we don't always agree. So what do you do if you disagree with someone else's idea? You talk together and see what can be right. We could do rock, paper, scissors. You would find a way to compromise and like really help your team out. Why should we listen to other people's ideas? People might be right. And if they don't listen, they might be wrong. They will never get new ideas and they will always stay with their old ideas because you could still learn from them. Exactly! Let's always make sure to let others know their ideas are heard, even if we might disagree. Presented by Shalott Hatton and Binger, Colorado lawyers inspiring the next generation of great citizens. Emily. Hi kids! I'm so happy to see you! It's been a long time. Juan, you look really happy. You have a huge smile on your face and your body's all full of energy. Yeah, it's just that I had such a great time hanging out with me familia. Your familia? Yeah, that's my family. Kids, can you say familia? Nice job. Whoa, so what did you do with your family, Juan? Well, I had so much fun. First, I had a dance party with my Tia. Your Tia? Yeah, Tia means aunt. And my aunts are so much fun. Oh, that sounds really cool, Juan. Yeah, it was. And then I went on a bike ride with my hermano. Your hermano? What's an hermano? Oh, hermano is my brother. Kids, can you say hermano? Nice job. Cool, Juan. What else did you do? Well, at the end of the day, I read books with my abuela. Oh, abuela? Who's that? Well, an abuela is a grandma. So, my grandma. Aw, that sounds like so much fun, Juan. Seems like you're really happy when you're around your family. I am. Kids, give me a thumbs up 
if being around your family makes you happy too. Wow, Juan, looks like a lot of kids love to hang out with their families. Kids, what do you like to do with your familias that makes you happy? Send me an email at Juan, J-U-A-N, at I-I-K dot O-R-G. That's Juan, J-U-A-N, at I-I-K dot O-R-G, and we'll read some of your messages on the air. Oh, Juan, that is so cool. That makes me happy to hear. Grown-ups, noticing and naming when your child is feeling happy will help them recognize happiness as an emotion. Try before bed every night saying, what really made you happy today? It's a great way to cultivate happiness and joy. And remember, feel your feelings. We have an opportunity for those of us who are able to work from home right now to pour into our kids more than we normally get to. I get to have this opportunity to pause and be still and smell the roses, for lack of better words, within our own home. All my parents out there, y'all are kicking butt. We will get through this and our children are going to be one of the things that actually helps us make it through this. Kids, it's Miss Melissa. I am teaching third grade English language development and I'm so excited you're here with me today. I love to start my lessons by thinking about one good thing that has happened to me either this week or this weekend or today. My good thing is that yesterday I got to spend the entire day outside with my kids enjoying the water and the sunshine here in Colorado. What's your good thing? So yesterday when I was enjoying the sun, I noticed that my kids all tan or sunburn a little bit differently from each other. So I actually, I tan really easily and I get pretty dark brown in the summertime and it got me thinking, when was the first time you ever noticed the color of your skin? When was the first time that you noticed that you were either white? light brown, dark brown, black, or any other color that you are. When was the first time that you noticed that? And for me, it wasn't until I was much older. I didn't really notice what color my skin was until I was much older. And for some people, they notice really, really early on. And I wanna talk about something really important today. I wanna to talk about race and diversity. And while we're talking about this, while we're thinking, I want you to really think what makes you who you are. What important things define who you are as a person and make up your own individuality or your identity? So before we can get started with this, we need to make sure that we understand what race is. And race is basically a way of grouping people together. And it groups people together, race groups people together, usually by the way that they look. It's usually by the color of their skin. This gets tricky though, boys and girls because people's skin color doesn't always reflect their background or their ethnicity or their culture or where they actually came from or what their, their genes were. So for example, I am Caucasian, I'm white, but in the summer I get really dark brown. So because I get really dark brown, people could confuse me for a different race. I also have a friend who is half black, half white. Um, 
and she had babies and her babies are about as pale white as you could possibly imagine. So their skin color does not reflect their, their part of their identity that has them as part black. It doesn't show that part of their race even though it's still there. I've also seen while teaching that some kids, if they have really dark skin, even if they're from Puerto Rico, um, some, some of those kids get lumped into being called black, being called African American, even though they're not. So we need to be really careful with defining people by race just by the way that they look. That isn't always a good way to define, define a person's race. Boys and girls, something that I think is important for you to know is that it's okay for us to talk about race. It's okay to have these conversations. It's actually really healthy for us to have these conversations about race. We're taught in school, and you're taught in school, that if you don't know something, you should ask. And that's the same thing with race. If you don't know something, then you should ask someone about that part of them. And if they don't feel comfortable answering, they have the option to tell you, no, I don't want to talk about that. But how are we going to learn about each other if we aren't willing to ask? Earlier I had used the word ethnicity, and I want to compare the difference between race, which is a way that we group people according to their skin color, typically, or the way they look, and ethnicity. And ethnicity is another way that we group people, but ethnicity usually depends on a person's culture, a person's religion, or their language. So we can group people by where they're from, so for example, my ethnicity is part Norwegian because I am, my family was from Norway. And you can also group me by my language, which would be English. That's my primary language, that's my first language. So you could group me by those different categories. So here's what gets tricky again. You can be a lot of different things at once. You can have a lot of different things that make you uniquely you. And so it makes it tricky to try to put people into this one little box. There's so many different things that make up who a person is. So for example, someone could be both African and American at the same time. They could be what we call an African American and they could have those two cultures that end up blending together. They can also be a Mexican and an American at the same time and have those two areas of your life meld together to become who you are and who you are might be even a little bit different from who your parents are because your identity is so uniquely you. Also, many kids speak many different languages. So if we just tried to lump kids into or people or adults into one little box based on their language, that that really stifles their creativity. That really makes it hard for them to be individual because some kids can speak two languages. Some kids can speak three languages. And these kids can come to school and speak English at school with their friends and then go home and speak a different language at home with their families or their friends at home too. And so they have these two different backgrounds that make them who they are. And what I really want to make sure that you understand by talking about all of this is that you don't have to fit into just one category. You don't have to fit into just one of these backgrounds and try to put yourself into this one little box that this is your identity and this is who you are and this is your race and this is your ethnicity. You guys can be so many different things all at once. Your identity is uniquely you and that's what makes you beautiful is having all of those different parts combined to make who you are. Okay, this is my daughter Callie and her friend Addie, and they're going to help with the project that you guys are going to be doing next, which is creating an identity poster. So they've already created their identity posters, and they're going to tell you a little bit about that. Ready, set, go. <laughs> okay, you show your identity poster. So these are our so, identity posters. So this is Addie's. So Addie, tell us a little bit about what you wrote. Um, I wrote my name, which is Addison Bogart. I wrote my race, which is white. I wrote my gender, which is female, and my religion, which is Christianity. And then I wrote my likes, which is softball, photography, art, swimming, friends, hunting, fishing, interior design, and family games. Okay, okay. and Callie? I'm, this is my identity poster. My name's Callie. Um, 
my race is white, my gender is a female, and then my religion is Christianity. And then I put, I like softball, tubing, paddle boarding, kneeboarding, photography, friends, camping, and photographing. Okay, so setting them like right here, what's the same? What's different that you guys noticed about yours? Like, what do you have in common? Uh, softballs. I softball. like softball, photography. And photography. And friends. And friends. Okay. <laughs> what about some differences? She what do you notice? She likes hunting and I don't. She likes hunting and you don't? Okay. Mm -hmm. So so just because you have differences, does that mean you aren't friends though? No. no. Okay. And it doesn't mean that one person's better than the other then, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. As you guys are making your identity posters, if you don't have somebody to compare with, you can always compare to the girls' posters that they've shown you on here too. Um, these differences that the girls talked about, that's what makes you unique. That's what makes you a little bit more interesting. If they were exactly the same, they probably wouldn't be as good of friends. <laughs> Unfortunately, what happens sometimes though is that people will make judgments about you based on your skin, your ethnicity, your gender, your religion, your size, or anything else about you. So for example, when I was little, somebody might have assumed that just because I'm a girl, I want to play with dolls, which wasn't true because when I was little, I was playing baseball with my brothers all the time. So the girls are going to walk you through one more activity which is breaking down stereotypes. So those things, those assumptions that people make just based on your race, your gender, your size, anything like that, those are stereotypes. They aren't necessarily true. So the girls have written down on a, on a paper plate uh, some assumptions that people make about them specific to Addie, specific to Callie, and you guys will do the same thing at home, some assumptions people make it about you based on some of the features of your identity. So what are, just give me a couple things. Um, teens these days are only addicted to their phones. Only addicted to their phones, okay. And I like this one too, read that one. Only skinny girls are beautiful. So Addie said only skinny girls are beautiful, assumptions that people make, okay. Um, I have some assumptions that just cause we're girls we like the color pink. Okay. And. And only girls like pink, and right? And only girls can yeah. like pink. And then another assumption I have is that because I'm blonde and dumb. Because <laughs> I'm blonde and dumb. Okay, and how about on, on the back? So on the back we wrote like things that are actually true. Like the reality, not just the assumptions, but things that are actually true about, um, again, specific to these girls, but you'll do the same. Things that are actually true about you after your assumptions. And what were yours? Um, all shapes and sizes are beautiful. I like that one. All shapes and sizes are beautiful. Not just the skinny girls that are pretty according to the assumption on the front. And then, um, girls, all girls can play sports. No, okay. it's not just a guy thing, so I play softball. Okay, so not, you don't have to be a, a guy to play sports. You can be a girl to play sports. And maybe even we could say like, Kelly doesn't really like pink. So just because she's a girl doesn't mean she has to like pink but my brother's favorite color is pink, so. <laughs> um, okay, do you have any more that you wanna share? I do. I like your real, Addie has, real friendships are cool and not just social media friendships are necessary. I like that one, that one's yeah. a good one. Okay. Making friends in person instead of just online. Um, some assumptions that people make about girls that we love drama, but I actually hate drama. Okay. Yep. And um, some is like school grades are the top priority. That's all that matters right now. And really mine is building relationships and giving my all is my top priority. So. Okay. Okay. So on this, guys, as you're making your paper plates or even just a sheet of paper is fine too with your assumptions and your realities, that's important that we just stay focused on those realities, on the things that are true about us instead of the things that people assume about us and to just stay true to your identity and stay true to the things that make you unique and make you who you are. I'd like for you guys to think about this activity before you make judgments about other people too. For example, when we talked about only um, that all girls like pink and only girls can like pink, think about that before you make that judgment because some boys do like pink. It's totally fine and you can do the same thing. Um, just really think about that you don't want people to make those assumptions about you before you say it about anybody else based on their, their race, the color of this, their skin, their religion, how big or short or tall or small or any of those things. Just really think about those and just trying really hard to be kind to everyone else. 
think that's it. Okay, thanks, girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thanks, girls, for joining me on this and for making your paper plates and showing them what to do with that. Yeah. Okay, say bye. 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 Okay, boys and girls, that's all that we have time for today. I just want to remind you of some things as we wrap up. It's healthy and natural for you to notice differences between you and other people. It's okay for you to be curious about those things, but it's not okay for you to be mean. Being different from someone else doesn't make you bad or wrong. And someone else being different from you doesn't make them bad or wrong. And the last thing I want to leave you with is you're always given a choice to be kind. And that is the choice that you should always make. We can learn to be kind to everyone under every circumstance. And that is what we really need to focus on. So when you're given the choice to be kind, take it. Be kind to everyone. Hey everybody, Ty Gallenbeck here, magician from Telluride, Colorado. And I have to tell you, I love playing cards. When I was in college, and I started to learn how to do magic, I almost always had a deck of cards with me. I would take them to class with me, carried them everywhere. They became part of who I was. And I know you guys today are talking about race and ethnicity and things that make you who you are. You see, with a deck of playing cards, on the back, all the playing cards look the same. And that's kind of like us as humans. We're all humans. We all look the same. We stand on two legs. We walk around. All those things that make us human make us the same. But then on the other side of playing cards, every single one of them is unique. And that's much like us. We are all different. We are all unique people. And there's things that make us who we are. For example, for me, uh, my skin color. I'm considered white. Now that's not going to be the same for everyone. We're all going to have differences. I have friends that are brown. I have friends that are black. Those things make us unique. You can have differences in things you like to do. I love to play baseball. Baseball is one of those things that makes me who I am. So I have that on there. Baseball as well. You could do eye color. I have blue eyes. That makes me who I am. So like that. Blue eyes. Uh, what else? Oh, I do, I do magic, of course. So that makes me who I am. Now, all of these things, the skin color, things I like to do, all of those things, uh, there can be other people that have those things, right? Like we all have these different pieces that make us up who we are. So, if we take, let's make these into pieces. So we all have pieces. Now, someone could have some of the same pieces that I do. Same color skin, same color hair, same color of eyes. Those could be shared around. And those pieces can go lots of different places, right? We could share some things we have in common with people, some things we don't. But it's when those pieces, all of those different pieces, and there's way more than four of them, but when all those pieces come together, just like this. See, ooh, that's hot. Ooh, hot. See, when all those pieces are put together, that makes us exactly who we're supposed to be. And that's what's truly magic, is that no matter what color skin you have, no matter what color hair you have, long, straight, curly, short, what color skin, brown, white, black, red, it doesn't matter. Those things, the things that make you who you are, is what makes you a magic person. And so I just want to say thank you guys for learning about this. I hope this helps a little, and we'll see you next time.
does it mean to be a good citizen? To be kind, be safe, do your job and show initiative. Help others. It means helping your parents and helping your family and doing what's right for you. When they see something wrong, they do the right thing. Like taking turns and sharing what they have and, and working together. That's right. Well, if you're a good citizen, you're kind to others. It means to help people. Be kind to every person, even if you don't know them. Take care of our community. Great answers. What can you do to be a good citizen at home, in school, and in your community? Presented by Shalott Hatton and Binger, Colorado lawyers inspiring the next generation of great citizens. Molly. Well, I just found out that we get to be on Rocky Mountain PBS for the next five weeks talking to our friends about feelings. Oh, Molly, I heard that great news too, and I'm also really happy and excited about it. Yeah, me too, because this summer was kind of boring and I didn't get to play with my friends as much as I wanted to. Me neither, Molly. Also, we didn't get to go on vacation or anything like that. Yeah, I didn't go on vacation either this summer. Well, I think being on Rocky Mountain PBS and talking to my friends about feelings, even if it's on TV, is gonna be really fun. It gives me something exciting to look forward to. It makes me feel very happy. Oh, I'm so glad to hear you're happy, Molly. When you're happy, where do you feel it in your body? Well, I feel happy in my face for sure. Yep, Molly, I can see that you feel happy in your face. You have a really big smile. Yep, I have a really big smile. It feels really good. And I feel happy in my belly. Really, you feel happy in your belly. What does that feel like? Well, my belly feels kind of warm and relaxed and, I don't know, just calm, but also good. Oh, your belly feels relaxed and good. I wonder if any kids at home also feel happy in their belly. Grown-ups in the room, kids just started back to school and with that big transition comes some stress. But there are probably also things that children are happy about with the start of school. New school supplies can be really fun. Seeing their friends again, even if it's just on Zoom, can feel really good. It's important for us to help our kids find the things that they're happy about so that they spend time in the feeling of happy, even though things can be really stressful right now. Yeah! That's a great idea. Talking about happy leads to more happy feelings. That's very true, Molly. It's good to practice being happy. Well, till next time. Yeah, feel your feelings.